This is Badger, and today I'm going over the employment of unguided rockets in the A-10C for DCS World. In the rearming menu, or in this case the loadout menu in the mission editor, we can see that rockets can be carried on stations 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, and 10. Stations 2 and 10 are capable of loading a single tube, whereas stations 3, 4, 8, and 9 are capable of loading three tubes on triple ejector racks. We can see two launcher variants, being the Lao 131 and the Lao 68. For the purposes of the simulation, they're more or less identical, with the only real difference being one is used by Air Force and the other used by Navy. Several types of rockets are available, including inert practice rounds, which are more or less useless in the simulation, white phosphorus, practice smoke, which is good for marking targets, parachute illumination, for illuminating areas at night, as well as high explosive and heat. The targets in this example will be light armor, in this case BMD-1s, and infantry. Now at this point, we have Master Arm enabled and the DSMS page selected, and we're able to see stations 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, 10 carrying rockets. We can see weapon quantities, weapon designation, as well as description. In this case, 42 Mark 151, 42 Mark 5 Heat, 7 156 White Phosphorus, and 7 Smoke. Selecting OSB 1, we can enter profiling mode, and using OSB 19 and 20, we can select profile. Using OSB 3, we can view the profile. It's here that we can change settings related to this weapons profile. On OSB 6, we can see we can select the release mode. Currently single, if we select it, it goes to pairs, which point it'll go to ripple single, alternating between left and right pods for the quantity selected on ripple quantity, with the final mode being ripple pairs. Ripple quantity is defined by selecting a value on the scratch pad and selecting OSB 8. The profile can be saved by selecting OSB3. If I go back into this profile, we're able to see it's currently on Ripple Single, where it'll alternate between three rockets. If I select Ripple Pairs, and I want it to fire off three pairs, I'll select a Ripple Quantity of six. At this point, it'll fire six rockets by firing three pairs in Ripple Pair mode. The Weapons Master mode can be selected on OSB10, with a choice between CCIP and CCRP, depending on the rocket chosen. Selecting OSB 16 to enter the settings page, we're able to see on OSB 7 and 8, we have offset. These would not be adjusted by the pilot, and do not need to be adjusted in the simulation. Finally, on OSB 18, we can see minimum altitude as used with the minimum release queue, as seen in the last tutorial for the Gao 8 Avenger. At this point, I'll conduct an attack using the Mark 151 high explosive rockets. With the HUD as soy, I could use DMS left and right to select the profile, or simply use the rocker on the UFC. As this profile was set up in CCIP, we can see at the bottom of the HUD the CCIP invalid indicator for the CCIP guns cross. This is due to the fact that in CCIP, both the rocket pipper as well as the CCIP guns cross are both drawn on the HUD. As I pitch the aircraft down an active pause, we can take a look at the HUD. We can see the rocket pipper, and just below it the CCIP guns cross. We're able to see the rocket pipper looks much like the CCIP gun reticle. Slant range is displayed digitally below the rocket pipper with an unwinding analog range bar that will start unwinding at 2 miles to target, starting at 12 o'clock and rotating anti-clockwise back to 12 o'clock, with the pipper drawn in the center of the reticle. At this point, as I dive in on the target at about a 25 degree dive angle, we're able to see, at 2 miles to target, the analog range bar starts unwinding. At this point, I'll hold weapons release until the salvo is complete and break away from the target. We were able to see, in this particular example, we fired off 14 rockets and 7 rippled pairs, killing all but the two BMDs. Here we can see a second example, using the Mark 151 high explosive rockets, again with a ripple quantity of 14, although this time firing in ripple single, and we're able to see as it alternates between the left and right launchers. The Mark 151 high explosive rockets are capable of taking out light armor, although it does take a few direct hits in order to do so. In this case, we can see that we have successfully destroyed vehicles in that particular target group. In this next example, we're able to see that we're using the Mark 274 smoke in CCRP. As we examine the HUD, we can see the rocket pipper is drawn, minus the CCIP guns reticle. And we're able to see on the left-hand side of the HUD, we have a fall line and a release queue, currently displaying 38 seconds. In CCRP mode, the goal is to set a sensor point of interest Fly the pipper to line up with the fall line, at which point, wait for the release cue to count down and fire off the salvo. As I'm not carrying a lightning targeting pod, in this case I'll simply set the HUD as soy and slew the target designator cursor over the target, pull TMS up to set the sensor point of interest. At this point, with the sensor designating a sensor point of interest, we can see the fall line displayed just to the left of the pipper. So I'll fly the aircraft left 
to set the fall line in the center of the pipper, at which point I'll level out and try to align the fall line with the vertical line extending from the rocket reticle. With the fall line aligned with the CCRP reticle, at this point I'll simply fly towards the target and wait for the release cue to hit zero, at which point I'm able to release the salvo. Alternatively, rather than waiting, at least 24 seconds as we can see currently, I can simply pitch the aircraft to place the pipper of the rocket reticle on the release cue and fire off the salvo. It goes without saying that this will degrade your accuracy, although for marking targets with smoke, this method can work quite well. In this case, we see the rockets land about 150-200 meters to the right of the armor. This allows us to mark targets from a distance, allowing Allied flights to take them out. For the final example, I'll be demonstrating illumination rockets. Selecting the DSMS page and cycling to the parachute illumination profile, we're able to see the settings are much as they were for the Mark 151 or smoke rockets. We have our release mode, ripple quantity, and our mode selected. Although in this case, we can see we only have one master mode, CCRP. As we go into changing settings, we can see we have two extra ones, drag, which has no function, and hide over target. In this case, if we enter a value and select OSB 16, we can set a height for the rockets to burn. Much as with the smoke rockets, in this case, I will use the HUD target designator cursor, slew it over the target area, Hold TMS up, designated as a sensor point of interest. Wait for the release cue to count down and fire off the salvo. At this point, we're able to see that I've illuminated the whole of Kobe Letty Airfield.